Doug, stand-up physicist, sitting down to tell you about this paper I wrote. What is it called? Three Roads to Quaternion Gravity. It's about 13 pages long, double-spaced. It will be submitted to uh, a conference I went to on space-time, the ontology of space-time, uh, fifth meeting uh, or so. Uh, I don't know whether it's going to be accepted. Uh, I know only 19 people went to the meeting. <laughs> not, a, not a big uh, crowd pleaser, as it were, uh, in Bulgaria. A little bit hard to get to. Uh, but it was valuable to me, and I am trying to, as best as I can, uh, formally present my pro new proposal uh, for how gravity might work. So, what are the three roads? Now, the first road uh, was the one I figured out in the spring of 2015, the 100th year anniversary of Einstein's um, uh, proposal for gravity, general relativity. Uh, and it was based on this very simple observation that if we take um, some event, so D, uh, we'll just use DQ, and we square that sucker up, um, there'll be a time component, uh, there'll be a space component, and then there'll be three other terms over here. And the observation was that this is Lorentz invariant. Doesn't change uh, for inertial observers. They all agree on that quantity, no matter what the heck's going on. And that's the basis of special relativity. The other three terms, I didn't have a name for them. I eventually called them in that spring space times time because there's space and you multiply it by time. Pretty sophisticated name, if I say so myself. Not. <laughs> okay. Uh, those are Lorentz variant. So under these Lorentz changes, whether the rotations or boosts, those guys are going to change. And we're okay with that. Every complete understanding of what's going on in special relativity involves knowing what doesn't change and what does change and how those things do change. So then I asked the converse question. I said, well, what sort of physics appears when you say, hey, two observers agree to that and that space times time, but they don't agree on their interval. And the only area of physics where the intervals really seems to change much at all is in fact general relativity. <laughs> so I was like, wow, that would certainly be way simpler in terms of the kind of uh, algebraic manipulations you'd have to do if that was really true. And so that's what I began exploring. And I must confess, I always thought about it in terms of um, X, Y, and Z. Uh, but in this paper, I, I point out that this is a far more general way to think about these squares because that first term there is, is that one, and this one is that one, except this applies no matter what your choice of coordinates are. You know, you could go with spherical coordinates or, um, you know, cylindrical coordinates. Doesn't matter. Um, that would be the space times time term. And I'm saying that that always uh, is the same for absolutely everybody. So, so that was, that was road one. Let's just keep that. Well, the problem with that is that Remember how I said, oh, there are these Lorentz transformations uh, that are, you know, intimately associated with that interval being constant because you do that change and lo and behold, that doesn't work. So you really must pair your uh, invariance principle, whatever it is, with the transformation. And um, I eventually did that. No, I didn't. <laughs> this guy, Purple Penguin, did that sort of thing for me or helped. Point, point me the, uh, the right direction. And um, so you can see that the space times time term there, it doesn't change at all. That's my underlying symmetry. But it means that things like uh, speed, that does in fact change. Um, and it goes up by this gamma squared. And then finally, uh, if you take, if, if you do the square that I've been discussing, 
uh, you see where the gamma kind of goes. And that's, uh, that's all well and good. Um, I think one of the, the nicer things that came out of this paper was, was this little uh, graph here where um, I've got constant intervals. That's the stuff of special relativity. And then I've got the graph of constant space times time. And you go, well, those are just kind of like a 45 degree relationship there. And that's like, that shouldn't be a big deal. That should be easy to figure out. Uh, it should be. <laughs> I don't know why it hasn't been. I don't know why haven't, people haven't explored it. But this picture actually has made concrete to mean something. And that is, uh, some people uh, have said, hey, why don't you do more with your proposal? And it's like, because uh, I'm not sure where to go next. <laughs> well, I actually started to get an idea uh, going. And that is, I'm going to go back and look at my books on special relativity uh, and say, wow, this is how they solved it. This, this, kind of, uh, this kind of little riddle. And what I'm going to say is, well, let me look at that riddle rotated by 45 degrees and see if I now can make a statement about my proposal for how gravity works. And to me, that might be a path to kind of flesh out this idea uh, more than, than I have so far. Okay, great. Then uh, the final leg, the final uh, road, is to realize that that transformation law, well, although it's got these gammas and the gammas take velocities, unless you have velocities <laughs> in different that have different uh, different values in, in space-time, it's not really going to do anything. So you really have to now look at space-time as having some kind of uh, a velocity everywhere you are here um, that would then kind of go into that expression. And it was like, well, what velocity would it be? And of course, it's, it's the escape velocity, uh, some, uh, a velocity to get yourself free of gravity. Um, and that only came about, you know, in last, last summer, summer 2018, when I realized, yeah, yeah, I've, I've, I've got my gammas. <laughs> That's a good thing. I've got my transformation law to go along with my conservation principle. But then you have to have a, a velocity field. And that's related to gravity. And so uh, now, now I had to fly, flesh out that idea. Uh, again, I'm not super confident about my capacity to do that, uh, which is my normal way. But but that's what you need to plug into there to see if um, if things are working out. If you just use Newton's, the Newtonian escape velocity, uh, you do better than Newton did. <laughs> uh, just not good enough to get a, a, along with our current uh, best tests of, of weak field gravity. And so then if you come up with kind of more an ad hoc way of, of having a velocity field, well, you can do better. But then people will complain, rightly so, I should say, uh, that you've got this kind of ab, ad hoc uh, proposal for the velocity field, and they, they don't like that. All right. Uh, but that's what it's like when you're coming up with a new proposal for how gravity works. You got to expect a, a, a lot of bumps along the way. And at least at least this, this paper represents my first efforts at uh, formally uh, introducing um, quaternion gravity to the uh, physics public. Thank you very much.